I'm Ned Gully. I'm from the MathWorks. We're the people who make MATLAB, if you're familiar with that. And uh, I'm here to talk about a particular programming contest that we've, we've run. Um, so of course, first I have to acknowledge that uh, programming contests and hackathons are very common these days. Um, you're probably familiar with the Netflix challenge, where they ran a contest to improve their suggestion algorithm. Um, Google runs code jams every year. And some companies like Kaggle, which is just acquired by Google, and TopCoder, uh, base their whole business model around programming contests. So what am I here to talk about? Well, contests, the way most people think of it, is a good way to, uh, to determine who has the greatest level of aggregate skill, one person's skill. So here are four of us competing. My code's in red, Kareem's is in blue, and Bob and Alice are also competing. Um, the images are, are shown there for, of each, each of our programs. And Kareem wins the contest. His code comes across. So the sponsors of this competition have identified Kareem as a, a talent right for exploitation, right? Um, so now I'm going to tell you about another programming contest. This is the one that we run, or have run in the past, and, and tell you about what makes it special. So let's look at a, new, a different kind of contest. Uh, in this case, Kareem, Alice, and Bob are already playing. And incidentally, uh, in case you're wondering why I'm picking on Kareem, uh, he and I have done some, some research and helped write some papers about this particular kind of approach to uh, programming contests. So I come to this entry. I see Kareem's code already. And then I can come in. I could, I could submit my own code complete uh, straight out of my brain. Or I can go inspect his code and modify it and submit it as my own. And so in this case, I've made a small improvement to his code. And I go into the lead. So the way that the contest works is that entries are scored, ranked, and displayed immediately. And uh, the contest runs for like a week, right? So con code and score are visible at all times. And anyone can modify anyone else's code and resubmit it as their own and go into the lead. So uh, we, we like to think that this actually is sort of more in line with how ideas uh, move through the real world. So you can see everything. And if you want to steal it, you can. Right? So all, all the ideas are, are completely visible. And I'm going to show you. I've got this really cool animation here that I'm going to run. And what you're going to see when I run the animation is the lines of code are colored by the individual who wrote them. And you'll see each of the leaders of this contest, from 1 to 70 some people who, who participated in the contest, the lines will change over time until at the end, we've got this perfect mosaic of several dozen authors who've all contributed to this top entry. It's a really awesome animation. But I just learned backstage before that the animation is not going to work in the slide format. So you'll have to take my word for it. I can show you later on my laptop. Uh, but fortunately, my next slide shows sort of a static, unrolled version of this thing. You would have seen it as an animation here. But this shows the same thing. Uh, sort of time is along the x-axis. And what you're looking at is the sort of what you might call the market share of individual authors over the course of the contest. So the dark blue is all one person. That's our starting entry. And then as novelty is introduced by new authors over time, you see new colors come in. And so the last entry, which is entry something like 85 over there on the far right, you can see is a mosaic, just as I said, of many authors. Right, so that, that gives you a sense of how these contests play out. Uh, here's another plot. This is uh, th just earlier this year, uh, in, in March, actually, I collaborated with some researchers from the University of St. Andrews uh, in Scotland. And here's a graph showing just, just zooming in on one part of the way the contest works. And so you can see an entry up at the top by an author. The, the little dots are colored by author. and so. Um, one, and then the, the name of the actual entry is shown there, written out. And you can see how entries are copied and modified. And so the, the purple author is, is some code is stolen by the yellow author, which is then stolen by the blue author. You see some of the naming conventions that each of these authors use. One likes to call the snake dog, snake dog one, snake dog room. Then you see some called snakey, 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 too snakey. So it's kind of fun. There's this social aspect. They're all seeing this happen in real time. So the, the thing that I want to talk about here, uh, you know, first of all, consider which of these is likely to be better. 
uh, one written by entirely one person or one written by a mosaic. I can tell you that one on the right always performs better. Uh, what are some of the distinguishing uh, parts of, this, of the MATLAB contest as opposed to the normal contest? This is the way I break it down. There's a lot of collaboration to create a common artifact, the winning entry. Everybody's not submitting a separate, lots of different artifacts. You're working on a common artifact. And this, co this collaboration is happening with very fine granularity. And this, this last piece I consider extremely important. People are uh, motivated, incentivized, to reveal potentially valuable private information in a public forum. And so I'm just going to say a few more words about this. Um, the question is, I show up, I'm, I'm a, I think of myself as a good programmer. How am I going to be motivated to reveal uh, some programming tricks to, the, to, the entire, to, to people who can then turn around and use my programming trick against me, right? Well, the, here, there I am on the, on the top left. I've got some code. The, the, the issue is I don't actually know if my idea is going to is, have merit, if it's going to improve the current le leading entry. In order to do that, I have to submit it to the server. The server acts as a sort of oracle to say, did, did my code improve the leading entry? If it does, great, good for me, I've learned that, but I've also created copies and shown them to everybody else in the competition. So I'm motivated to get into the lead, I'm motivated to submit my code to the oracle, but in doing so, I enrich the marketplace, everybody sees that code. So um, this, this is what I'm especially excited about now. How can we build social structures that use competition and uh, network effects to recruit participants and encourage those participants to reveal valuable information and do significant amounts of uh, integration work. So I'm sure a lot of you in this room are familiar with the DARPA Network Challenge, also known as the Red Balloon Challenge. The winning team from MIT used this sort of network effects to recruit and, and help find, uh, help create the winning entry. And then recently, I've been very interested to learn about Numerai, which is uh, looking to exploit network effects in the hedge fund business. And it's hard to think of a more secretive, collaboration-resistant business than, than hedge funds. So if they can make collaboration work in that space, you know, we'll really be on to something big. So that's, that's what I'm excited about right now. And I'm, I'm interested to talk to anybody else here who's, who's interested in the space. I'm happy to show you more about our programming contests. We've run a lot of them. We, we know that they really motivate people. They get very excited about it. Ours is, is a toy. It's a game. But I think there's ideas here that can be exploited for tremendous benefit to society. Um, so I, I'm calling this the ultimate enabling technology uh, uh, because you, you can leverage competition and network effects to create common value. Of course, this happens in, in um, open source programming. But not always when the integration is difficult, the granularity is happening at a very fine level. So you can tease out skills uh, at, at a very fine granularity from across large populations. And uh, revealing, you're asking people to reveal information that they might otherwise want to keep private. So that's my story about the MATLAB programming contest in the small and using social structures to uh, encourage this, this kind of collaboration in the large. I'd love to talk to any of you about these, uh, these ideas. Thank you very much.